You should look like really professional. <laughs> Okay, Malia, where are how do people from? Along coastal bays northwest of BC. People have been on the island for 6,000 to 8,000 years. Ooh. There's two main population centers. One in Old Masset, which is in the north part, and one in Skidigate, on the south part. Hyaguay has lots of rain and very much forestry, so their clothing is very crucial to them. Haida people wore pieces of clothing that are very similar to the Chinook tribe. The women wore a type of kilt or apron of bark fringe across their thighs and wore decorated bands around their ankles. The clothing were made for women specifically because the men hunted and fished for the community. Haida people have a special blanket called the Chikat. If that's how you pronounce it. Chill cat. <laughs> it's used for ceremonial occasions. They had a lot of rainfall, so the Haida people had clothing to protect them in the rain. They wore hats that were made of cedar and blankets that are woven with mountain goat wool with bold colors and dramatic designs. The chiefs during special ceremonies wore elaborate head coverings made of carved wood trim with shell and ermine. Society is divided into two groups, raven and eagle. Picture, picture. Their theory is based on moiety lineages. There are also subgroups that fall into the moieties. Both have unique combination of crests, different songs, and names. They cannot marry people of the same moiety. So, yeah. So what are their spiritual beliefs? Well, in Haida Gwai's uh, spiritual beliefs, they believe that Raven is a trickster and their stories are based on his exploits in, of freeing the humankind from a clamshell. Um, <laughs> he is a paradoxical figure as, he's, as he is mischievous, greedy, and has cruel intentions. But the Haida people basically Praise him. Haida's artwork is often associated with a traditional totem pole. They use common figures such as animals, birds, sea creatures, and mythical creatures that identify a raven or eagle. They really do believe in raven or eagle. They're praised. They're praised. Ah! What did Haida people eat? Malia. They would eat elk, bear, salmon, and even mountain goat um their food can be found in the forests or oceans how they cook the food is by using heated rocks inside a cedar box or heated rocks inside of a basket of water over the summer they dry foods to preserve for the winter such as plants and salmon the women also pressed rich oils from candlefish <laughs> There's a specific word for it, but I can't pronounce it. And they use it to dip their food in, so it doesn't, it's not too dry. We're here to talk about ceremonies. So the potlatch was Haida's biggest ceremony. Potlatch means to give. At a potlatch, the host would give the guests a gift. The richer the family, the bigger the gift. Potlatches were to celebrate marriage, birth, death, or coming of age, which is a birthday. Potlatches could go as long as three weeks and out. We all know that potlatches were banned from a certain point in time and they were made illegal. That put a very big impact on their community. Housing. So Haida Nation lived in houses that were referred to as long houses. They were made of large cedar trees. They didn't have to move their villages anywhere because the food was already like there so they didn't have to move during the winter or anything. The front of the house is called 
because I don't know how to pronounce it. They have totem poles and family crests. The roof is really low, so it's easier to keep warm in the winter. And besides the door, there is an opening on the roof so smoke can get out when they're cooking their food and stuff. And many families shared one longhouse. Um, they, they would have bunk beds, I guess. One would sleep on top of the bunk bed, in the bunk bed, and on the bottom of the bunk bed. So they had like millions of people staying in one longhouse. And they dug holes in their longhouses to storage food. Next day. Hey guys, welcome back. It's another day. Outfit change. This is the fit. I don't look very nice today, but it's only my half day, but my makeup looks good. I have like my eyeliner is like pretty bomb today. So what are we gonna do now? We're gonna talk about music and dance. Wow! The Haida Gwaii customs, beliefs, and history were passed orally through stories, songs, and dances. Certain stories about things occurring, for example, the changes in the season. There are also stories about each group and how they appear in the world. The Raven Dance is an important dance to the Haida community. It's to celebrate the myth and braveness of the Raven. They also use the dance when someone else in the tribe passed away. Wow! Haida tribe's music is shrouded in secrecy, largely as a response to their visual art being exposed by Europeans in the 19th century. Haida's songs are constructed of a unique speech vocal style and foundation tones, which tell a story of each piece and each ritual. The Haida people use drums, rattles, and voices to produce sound. Haida normally wear masks while dancing. There is a group called the Shaman. These specific people could talk to spirits and could heal anyone who was ill. They could either be a man or a woman, but often it was a man. They only are not just people that can talk to the ill, they are also the tribe leader. Some Haida villages have up to 30 longhouses with 1,000 people living in them. That's a lot. Wow! Okay. Everyone say hey yo. Hey yo. So, where are hiding people from? They're a long <laughs> TV Cribs. Did you just bark at us? <laughs> I just care Oh, I thought you were trying to bark. Bloopers! Okay. Music and dance. I'm wearing. Oh, that's tight. Anyways. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, I need a bit. So, Milia, where are hiding people from? <laughs> <laughs> Come on now! Okay, Milia, where are Hada people from? Along coastal bays of Northwest. Ah! Ah! So, you need an airport. It's a nail. It's only cool cat. Wear your mask and have your lanyard. Safety. What? 